recording. Thanks. All right, so um, we've covered a number of new features with the Visual Studio 2015 with C Sharp 6 we're gonna talk about next time. Um, but a lot of the new stuff that's come out this last year, one of them is the Roslyn compiler, which allows us to really kind of take control of how the compiler runs. We can throw analyzers at it so it can lint our code for us. We can um, throw business rules at it so we can make sure code works a certain way like we want it to. So it's an extremely powerful tool. One of the things that gave us is the ability to write scripts for C Sharp. So before we could do something in Python or we could do something in JavaScript with Node or JScript even, um, now we can actually do that exact same thing with C Sharp. So ScriptCS is one of the ways that people have done to make that easier. Um, to install it, you need Chocolatey, which you can get from here. Um, you can just click that or you can copy this stuff down here. It's just a simple PowerShell command. There we are. Now Nate has Chocolatey. Why are the names so stupidly nowadays? Because we're computer scientists. We're terrible at naming. It just, it's not where we come from. Um, all right, so Chocolatey is now ready. So if you come back over here to the script CS stuff, you can see that the, uh, it scrolls fast. The command is just cinst and then the name. So we can do cinst script cs. Okay, we need to restart the command prompt. There we go. Okay, so it'll go through. It'll say you want to accept the license or that you are accepting the license. It'll ask one more question. I forget what it is in a second. Um, but basically that's all there is to it. So running Chocolatey is just running that command and then cinst script cs. So Chocolatey, if you're not familiar, is just a package manager. Um, it works similarly to NuGet uh, or even, what is it in Linux? wget or apt-get, whatever it is. Yum. Yum, a number of them. But you can see it does actually use our .NET stuff. So it's using NuGet to resolve some of these dependencies for script CS. Um, you can see it's got the Umbraco core, which you may be familiar with. It's making sure we have Roslyn support so that we can do this kind of stuff. Um, but you can see two of two packages were installed, and away we go. So the first thing that we have is if we just run script CS, it'll give us a C sharp REPL. So we can come in here and we can say bear message. I'm not familiar with the term REPL. That's too bad. Mm -hmm. um, REPL read, evaluate, print, loop. So it's a way we can run commands immediately and then see the exact result. So you can see here I just created a variable for message and semicolons are important. Basically, that's created. I can come in here and say console.writeLine. and you can see we get the execution exactly as we go. So I can do anything that I could do in Visual Studio right here inside of the REPL. So if you want to do something just really fast, just to say, all right, is this quick little snippet of code going to work? Fire up your REPL and off you go. Okay, to get out of it, just control C and you're done. Okay, but the biggest command or the biggest utility for script CS is to write reusable commands. So if we come over here to Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code specifically. I'm actually going to create a new window. And then, Nate, where do you have a location I can use for a minute? Anywhere you want. D. <clears throat> okay, so we now have this folder. Um, that we can work with. Come in here and add a new file. Let's just do hello world. And we can of course name our files with CS. Um, they have our new extension which is CSZ, but both of these will work. Um, change our language to C sharp. Okay, but from here again, if we just do the same thing we did before, we can see what happens. Now, Visual Studio Code 
does have a plugin that you can get um, just through its little command thing here. You can do install, if you can spell it right. And then you can search for script CS. I've already got it installed. I did it just a second ago, so it's probably not going to pull up. Yeah. Oh, there it is. But it's already installed. Um, so from here, I can bring this in and say script CS, and you can see execute is the option. It'll go ahead and fire everything up. Yeah. Eventually. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, I think you're seeing the get up front. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, well, am I not seeing? OK, fine. Control Shift R. Nope. I did restart this, right? I was going Try this again. There we are. Script CS. Sweet. Okay, so you can see we get the exact same command as we did over here in the REPL. The nice thing is that now we have something more repeatable. Um, I probably should have used that because I have all my Mongo stuff set up over there. Well, I won't do the Mongo demonstration then, actually. I'll do that and just create a new file. Um, so we can do something. more advanced if we want. Um, if we come over here back to our output and we change to the directory we want to have it in, what do I name it? Okay, script CS will allow us to get NuGet packages exactly like we're used to. So I can do script CS um, and I forget the command. Fortunately, Oh, yours is backward. No, mine's the right way. <laughs> okay, so just dash install. <laughs> okay, so script CS dash install, and then whatever NuGet package you want to install. You can see it'll go through here and do installing packages. And this is again going to be using NuGet to download and get everything. The nice thing is, whoops is it creates everything that we need for us. So if we come in here to the D drive, script CS, you can see it creates the scripts packages. There's all the stuff that I just installed through NuGet. And then of course we have this script CS package.config, which we can look at in here. It's just an XML. And if you've ever looked at the packages.config that Visual Studio creates, it's gonna look identical to this. Okay, and it's just NuGet packages that gets installed. You get versions and everything. Um, so now if I want, I can come in here and run a Mongo script that's going to get everything that I want. I don't get automatic namespacing like I do in Visual Studio, so I still have to put in everything that I want to use up here. But once I have that, change back on me, then I can go ahead and do everything that I want. Um, I'm going to assume it doesn't have this installed and running, but we can pretend for now. So I can get the driver to connect to the Mongo client. Um, I can get the database. Uh, let's just say it's a user's database. And then Um, something that's in the user database, let's say roles is in the user database. Anyway, from here I could do collection dot uh, insert actually I can just do and say name is admin. And I could execute that and it would update my Mongo and I could do something. 
Um, this was just a simple command that I came up with. What I mostly use this for is running builds. So I don't know about you guys, but we have um, our main project that of course has all of its dependent projects in the same solution along with a test project. The issue becomes some of those or lots of those projects are shared among multiple solutions. So I'm able to run it and run my tests for that particular project, but I can't guarantee that those tests aren't going to be broken for other projects. So what we've done is we've written C sharp scripts, just running the language that we are writing the code in, that will go through and grab all of the project test projects and execute them just using MS test, kick each one of those <coughs> off, store off the results, um, and then give us a quick rundown of this one passed, this one passed, this one failed, here are the things that failed on it. And again, it's all just C sharp. So it's language and features that we're used to. Um, short of connecting my laptop, which I know has Mongo running, that's pretty much it. So it's really just as simple as that. Questions, comments? So yeah, script CS. Um, in fact, we've talked about even replacing our entire build server with just this. You're going to replace team? Final builder? Final builder? We're kind of wanting to replace it with gulp anyway. Gulp? <laughs> Works better for us. Like how many people are making code changes? Uh, there are eight to ten, depending on the the project, at any given point in time that are working on them. So having something like this is nice because we can kick off all the tests, make sure everything works before we try to push it up and have it reviewed. And scale pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just have the one script just committed into the root of our repository, and then everything we need to build is just in a config file. So it makes it really easy to break everything out and. Test it. <laughs>